I want to read something to you guys, and I want to make a, make a comment about just where we're at right now in light of some news that has come out even uh, this day. First of all, I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And so he says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to fear, or no, wait, tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. Don't get upset. It's a, it means to hate what's bad, mean, ugly. A time of war and a time of peace. Just before the colonial war began, um, Pastor Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg had already prearranged the service and how it would go. He went before his congregation that was uh, just under a thousand people. I mean, that's a mega church in 1775. That's a mega church, man. And um, he gave a sermon. By the way, he would give his sermon in English and then he'd go across town and deliver his sermon in German in in another church. Pastor two churches in two different languages at the same time. But at this particular moment in time, uh, Pastor Muhlenberg read this portion of scripture, and he was wearing his black robe. He had his traditional black robe on, and he grabbed it, and he ripped it open, and it revealed his colonel's uh, uniform. And he made the announcement that it's time for war. And 300 men, is reported, kissed their wives and children in the church and stood up and walked out of the church and met Pastor Muhlenberg in the yard where they took up arms to defend their freedom. And the rest is actually history because you would know that to eventually come or become the shot heard around the world. And I say that to say this, that just a few weeks ago, I interrupted the book of Romans because as I looked around at the world news, it was clear to me that things are just going so fast in the end time scenario of life-changing events, just in the area of economics for one thing. And most people, and I get it, most of us are too busy to care. I understand that. We're just trying to put food on our table, so to speak, right? I get that. But the noise level has reached a point of the United States in the state of, according to Michelle Bachman, maybe some of you heard her on Dr. Dobson's broadcast, but Congresswoman Michelle Bachman told us today about how the United States, there's a plan for the U.S. to basically uh, surrender uh, on, what's the date? Is it the 11th? That the Biden administration has approved the moving ahead of surrendering our national sovereignty to the World Health Organization, which becomes the governing body of how Every individual on earth uh, 
will conduct themselves based upon their decision making regarding your health and your future. And they tried it last year and Botswana was the only nation that kept it from happening. It needs a United Nations uh, uh, unanimous vote or the, all the members of the UN, the member nations, not all the nations, the member, the leaders have to agree. And um, Botswana was the fly in the ointment. They saved the world last year. Uh, but it looks like, unless there's a miracle, the constitution will be brought under the World Health Organization's decision-making process uh, in Europe. And my question to all of you is, uh, who have you heard that from? Where's, where is uh, our elected representatives? Where is our, uh, where's Kevin McCarthy? And um, where is Michelle Steele and Young Kim and Mike Garcia? Where are they on this? Now, when you get a hold of them, they're going to say something like, well, you don't understand the, the actual, what's it called? It's uh, something 79. Is it, is it HR 79? I may be off on that. But um, I don't know about you guys. Maybe, uh, apparently, um, our, our nation is at a point where they don't think anybody cares um, to say anything about it, so they're not even informing you, or it also means, perhaps, that they're going to do it no matter what you say. And so you will no longer uh, have the freedom to decide whatever on whatever when it comes to this is an, this is an international health crisis. <laughs> do you realize what, if you declare an international health crisis, what that could possibly open you up to doing to people in the whole world? This will be, if, if it happens, it will be the most epic change in global governance probably since the day of the Tower of Babel. Think about it. Think this through. That the entire world will come under the jurisdiction of a global entity that's based in Europe, but is literally owned by the Chinese government. You put that together, where America no longer has a voice, where Anthony Fauci said, there will most likely be another pandemic in the middle of 2024. Now, if you go search that, he said that three weeks ago, when you see things like this now, you better take a screenshot because it evaporates really quick. Thank God some people have this on video and they've got that. And uh, this is one of those things. Can you tell I'm trying to get thrown off of YouTube right now just <laughs> by what we're doing? Let's just watch and see how long it takes those goons to jump into the <laughs> trap I'm setting. So, you know, just set your timer. I've already mentioned Fauci. I've already mentioned COVID. The algorithm's going nuts already on us. <laughs> who? I did mention who. Isn't it funny? When you say who, it's like, we're going to fall under the control of who. Doesn't, I'm sorry, but doesn't it remind you of Get Smart? <laughs> some of you don't know Get Smart. You should watch some vintage Get Smart. So this week, on Tuesday, the United States has reached an all-time low in its National Emergency Oil Reserves. The National Emergency Oil Reserves was a plan that our government invented in the 40s to, very clever, it was a plan to store so much oil in the United States that when the nations of the world, A, ran out of oil, they would have to buy it from us. Brilliant plan, 
It's like saving up for a rainy day. It's very Jacob-like in the Bible. Or if somebody cut us off from oil, we would have our own. We, in other words, we, were, we would be independent. And we are no longer now independent. That has been... That has been... Have you noticed the gas prices have gone down over the last four weeks? Anybody? They've gone down. Do you remember where they were? They've gone down about 50 cents, I think. Do you know how they came down? Yes. They pulled it out of the oil reserves to make you, to get you to think... Look, things are good. The oil's going down. The price of gas is going down. You guys, you have no idea how much we paid so that you saved an extra seven or 25 bucks at the pump. See, what's going on? God knows what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But I do know it's global. And I want to show you two slides. One first. Um, are you looking at this? Yeah. By the way, this is Klaus Schwab's assistant. Yes. Yes. Yuval Noah Harari warns AI can create religious text, may inspire new cults. I want you to think about this for a moment. Have you, have any of you, I know the young people have, I'm sure. Have any of you seen, have any of you watched when guys like Ben Shapiro or others, um, um, oh, I'm trying to remember who it is. Elon Musk. When they asked AI to write a symphony, have you seen it? Have you watched it? Have you seen, like, when, when Shapiro asked for a poem, he asked AI to write a poem. Uh, and we're talking about fantastic work, brilliantly done in seven seconds. AI can do it this fast. So, a guy, I won't say his name, a guy that I know that works in Hollywood. Do you know that the screenwriters in Hollywood are starting to panic right now? Did you know, you know what they're talking about right now? The screenwriters in Hollywood, they're panicking because word got out that we may not need another screenwriter again because all you need to say is, I want a super sci-fi thing with these things in it. I want a movie with a script like that, like, like this. Do it and, it, and it will do it in seconds. What I'm telling you is not make-believe. But I found it fascinating that of all people on the planet, Klaus Schwab's assistant, that's another thing that's going to cause the algorithm to go nuts. <laughs> Klaus Schwab's assistant, who is an unbelieving atheist Jew... I find that interesting. Introduces uh, the world to the possibility of a religious text being created that could create a new cult. Well, how about the next slide? Could chat GPT create a new religion? World is on the verge of a contemporary faith started by an AI writing its own sacred text, historian claims. You're going to laugh at this, but I'm going to tell you what's going to not be funny. If a religious text came out of a box or your computer, the chances of you taking it seriously is probably pretty slim. But if that AI device is an, a, a, a humanoid-looking individual, in other words, it's AI, but it looks like a human, and it speaks, and it says, and it delivers a new religious text, you might say, well, that's ridiculous, Jack. Who would follow a religion from a machine? <laughs> Read that somewhere. The Bible says that the Antichrist... 
And the beast is going to have power to give breath and life to an image, something man-made, that is going to be able to speak and to discern, to look, to decide who's got 666 and who doesn't. It's going to be the third party of the unholy trinity. It's Satan, the Antichrist, right? And the beast is the false prophet. The false prophet, there's going to be an image, a statue made in honor of the Antichrist. And that, machi- that, that statue is going to be animated. And so what's amazing is that if Paul the Apostle warned the Corinthians who were just radically New Age crazies when he came, when he arrived there in Greece. I mean, they'd worship anything. They they wouldn't pass up a moment to make a worship service out of something. In fact, there's stuff that fell from the sky in the sense of a meteor, and they worshiped and and said that it came from from, uh, from Zeus. (laughs) And uh, when Paul said to the Corinthians, do you, know, do you not know that when you bow down to an image, that you're actually praying to demons, that you're connecting with demons? You know, demons seek to occupy things. In the study of biblical demonology, which I don't even know if schools teach it anymore, It's real. Demons look for things to inhabit. They have to have what's called an entry as the lingo. It could be a token, could be a gift, it could be a statue, it could be an image, an icon. Could be a listen, could be a stuffed stuffed teddy bear. Doesn't matter. Demons seek entry. Look, remember when Jesus was casting legion out of the man? And do you remember? It's remarkable that Jesus even did this. But he has his purposes. They, didn't they plead with him? Didn't the demons plead with Jesus? Please don't send us to the abyss. Please don't send us. It's not time yet. Isn't it wild that they knew that they had limited time? And they knew who he was. And they said, Jesus... Let us go into those pigs. And uh, did he gesture? Did Jesus, what? We don't know, but he allowed it. We don't know why, but he did. And the Bible says 2,000 pigs then went nuts and they ran into the Sea of Galilee and they killed themselves, which is really weird because that, it's not that they drowned it. It's, they probably, those, the, the, those, the, the pigs that were in that part of the world at that time, they had really weird hooves. And when they would try to swim, they would slit their throat when they would swim because they would turn their feet this way and they would just, it was, must have been horrible. 2,000 of them possessed. Imagine if Paul said, when you, Corinthians, get idols out of your life. There's demonic activity in those idols. If he said that 2,000 years ago about a clay statue or a bronze image, what's going to happen on the day that a demon possesses an AI device? Are you hearing me? Right now, we're being introduced that they can write a symphony. Right now, we're being told that the screenwriters are fearful for their jobs because... They can be replaced with better writers. They're not even human. Can you imagine if something just was able to walk and to talk and say everything that your heart has desired, everything that you want to hear? Can you imagine if you are just into hearing, listen, just you have a gravitational pull toward lies, Where it's like, you know what? I don't want reality. It's too much. It gives me a headache. I'm out of I'm I'm out of vodka. I'm out of pills. Just tell me something nice. 
enter. Imagine this, enter. You, maybe you can just call up, turn on your screen. I don't know what's coming, but we know this, that if clay images can be possessed by demons, do you think man, watch, man is gonna create a God in his own image. That's what's happening right now. AI is mankind creating an image that is going to win him over. It's almost like man is creating the God that he wants. Be smart. It's smart. Tell me what I want. It knows what you want. Speak to me. It's going to speak to you. Listen, what no one has stopped to think about, no one's, no one's bringing this up. What is going to happen to the global stock market the moment an AI device starts involving itself in the market? Have you thought of this? Friends, listen, you need to know Jesus Christ now. Because if next month an AI device is used, I'm making this up, I'm making this up. If an AI device is used, for example, by Morgan Stanley, J, uh, JP Morgan, or, or, uh, or um, Chase, or, or uh, BlackRock, can you imagine what if, what if a global investment corporation gets their hands on an AI device and it's able to either manipulate the markets or to devastate the markets? Whatever we have known as normal is gone. You see, Jack, that would, that would never happen. Might I remind you, I just showed you on a screen that AI, I think, listen, this guy, Yuval, he's, he knows exactly what he's saying. He's just letting out a little string to, to wait for the bite, and then he'll set the hook. Because he'll get people used to hearing, oh, well, isn't that, I, I'm just dying. Watch this, what if? I'm just so curious to read that text, that religious text that was made by that AI device. I'm so curious. Could you imagine? What if you read it? And it's got some sort of demonic power to it. You say, Jack, you're out of your mind. No, I'm actually almost reciting scripture in the last days perilous times will come and the bible tells us that there will be spirits afoot and doctrines of demons that jesus said if it were possible it would deceive even the very elect of god Amen. and all of a sudden we're here i mean i gotta tell you Three or four weeks ago when I said, I'm going to pause in the book of Romans to get into this few week study of signs of the coming Antichrist. So much has changed since then. And by the way, I've never had two million views of any sermon I've ever given. But that first Sunday, the, over two million views. What does that mean? That means people... It hit a note. People are asking questions. People are wondering. And so what I'm saying to you is that as Ecclesiastes, there's a time. There's a time for us to wake up and to realize, God, you've got this. You are in control. And it's so out of our control that it's obvious that God's in control. That what we, are, that we must be able to do is to present the gospel. You should be equipped on how to tell someone the gospel like never before. This should be your number one thing. You should know how to tell somebody in five minutes the gospel of the living God. You should know that. Because you know what? I don't know where we're going to be three weeks from tonight. Things are moving so fast. Now, in light of saying that, you see, Pastor, I just, my boyfriend just engaged. We just got engaged last night. Good for you. You celebrate that. You go pick out your dress. You move forward. You set your date. 
You get married, travel the world, and have babies, or have babies, and then travel the world. But have babies. Have a life. Go for it. Occupy till he comes. We are supposed to live our lives to the glory of God until Jesus comes back. Live it, live it big. Live your Christian life at full throttle. Just know this, any day now. It could be 50 years from now. Let's hope not. It could be 50 days from now. We don't know. We know this. Three weeks ago, three weeks ago, we didn't know about AI being able to write religious text. Here's the funny thing. Who, who put that into the AI to write a religious text? The AI didn't say, you know, I'm just, excuse me, creator, yes, I'm just, I really have an itch. I want to write a religious text. No, someone put it in there. These are amazing times. Do you agree? I mean, think about it. You say, why did I come here tonight? It is true, you won't hear this anywhere else, but I gotta tell you, it ought to make you look at your Bible and say, um, wow. Because the scripture laid all this out. I'm, I'm not making up anything that the Bible doesn't address. Deception on a scale that's impossible for any human to navigate without the Holy Spirit's Amen. guidance. Inside of you is either the Holy Spirit or not. And the only way that you're going to make it through these waters, apparently starting now, <laughs> is the Holy Spirit guiding you. Amen.